Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Dose. And to open up the week, we're actually going to talk about one of my favorite consoles ever made, being the Nintendo GameCube. Now, it might not necessarily have been their best-selling console, but you know what? It just had so many great games. And that's why, to this day, you'll notice that you'll still see gamers, new and old, rediscover its plethora of gems. You know, whether that be through the GameCube itself or even through emulation, it is just a phenomenal, phenomenal console. And over the last so many years, we have kind of gone through this renaissance of GameCube titles. It's almost like Nintendo suddenly realized that there's a lot of money to be had here. So they've been porting over all of these games to the Switch, whether that be the Pikmin series or, you know, even the recently remade Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. That is legitimately one of the greatest JRPGs ever made. Definitely go check it out. But here's the thing. Interestingly, something emerged online over the weekend that indicates that Nintendo might actually have an even bigger plan for the GameCube than just simply remastering games. Yeah, this is something the fans have wanted for a very long time, pretty much all generation long, and we're going to talk about that possibility today. Now, do stay tuned for some other news as well. We do have a delay to talk about, which I believe includes Game Pass, and then also a couple surprise releases as well. As always, I do have timestamps below, so you can skip to whichever portion of the video that you would like to watch, but let's go and get started off with the first surprise, though I I do think that this is a little disappointing just because it has, in my opinion, the potential to be so much more. So what I'm talking about here is a brand new Disney-themed JRPG by the name of Disney Pixel RPG. Now, we don't have gameplay quite yet, but they do have a website up, and it reveals quite a bit of information. On their website, it says, Head out on a unique adventure with pixel art versions of Disney characters. Our story takes place in a chaotic domain where many Disney game worlds are interconnected. A myriad of beloved Disney characters have assembled from various game worlds. They then tell us the premise of the story, the game worlds that these Disney characters call home have suddenly been invaded by strange programs and starting to break down. Now, in my opinion, I think it honestly sounds interesting on paper. Almost kind of like that other Disney-related game, Kingdom Hearts, in case you don't know, uh, but in a more retro turn-based system. Again, I do like the idea on paper, and I like the 8-bit art style. I think it looks really nice and promising. You can also see some of the characters here, which includes Maleficent, you have Mickey Mouse, Ariel, Baymax, Genie, Winnie the Pooh, Aurora, and also Stitch. You can even build your own avatar. So they're going all out with tons of characters and a lot of customization. So by this point, you might ask, why do I think that this news is a little bit disappointing? And that's unfortunate because this is being built for mobile phones, which more than likely means that this is probably going to be a gotcha style of RPG. It's coming to iOS and Android devices later this year. You can actually pre-register now if you want. But, I mean, I just feel like this is a missed opportunity to a degree. I mean, sure, it could come out and really surprise us core gamers. You never completely know. It could still actually end up being very good. But there's a reason that mobile gacha games has the reputation that they do. So, I mean, we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens. I wish it was made for PC and consoles. But nonetheless, here it is, Disney Pixel RPG. Now, let's go and talk about this GameCube situation, because this is legitimately very interesting stuff. And if this actually proves to be accurate, this could end in a couple of different ways. So what's going on here is that over on Famiboards, Luigi's Blood discovered that Nintendo has some kind of GameCube controller in their pipeline. You can see here posted up on Reddit, it says a user on Famiboards, Luigi Blood, posted some custom shipping data. In this was discovered to be possible references to the GameCube controller, with similar code names and parts to previous NSO controllers. Another user, LIC, backed this up, but both users still had reservations about what this means. Now, Luigi's Blood actually responded to this post and clarified a little bit further. Luigi said, good on you for saying that we do still have some doubts about it, but I am cautiously optimistic on this one. I have not said GameCube NSO controller out of nowhere on this though. The name of the PCBs I found very much could imply that, but for the time being, as of May 2024, we can only see up to two months ago, it's in the prototyping stage. While having definitely GameCube parts showing up, this I can 100% be certain about. The question is whether they are related to the PCBs I found. All of this showed up for May 2024 and not anywhere before, so we're still a ways off for now. I am waiting for next month so we can possibly have further ideas on what's going on. So, 
more or less, the idea here is that this new GameCube controller could be an early indication that GameCube games are, in fact, heading over to the Nintendo Switch Online subscription service. Nintendo, of course, did similar things with the NES, the Super Nintendo, and the Nintendo 64. They re-released controllers for each one of those systems that you can use to play on your Nintendo Switch. I mean, I think that's a brilliant way to bring these games back. It really kind of gives you that nostalgic feel with holding those original controllers in your hand. And the idea here is that they're going to do the same thing with GameCube as well. In theory, I mean, I really like this idea. And this would be their best opportunity to ramp up their subscription numbers as we move into the Switch successor. I mean, this could even coincide with the Switch successor and its release. Here's my thing with all of this, though, and why I'm a little bit hesitant to believe that this is for Nintendo Switch Online. I mean, sure, on one side, I would love for this to be the case, but I do also think it's important to keep in mind and to just kind of point out what Nintendo has been doing these past few years. Those GameCube remasters have been a huge boon for them. So I almost kind of wonder if they would rather continue remastering that library instead of doing Switch Online games. Now, I'm not saying that's what they'll do. There's a lot of money to be had in subscriptions if they can get those numbers up. But it is something to maybe think about. I feel like in situations like this, people oftentimes just automatically go to the best possible outcome for consumers. But businesses don't really always look at things the way we do. So I do think it's important to look at other possible outcomes as well. And realistically here, this discovery could also imply that there's just a new GameCube controller, period, and, and nothing else. I mean, if you think about it, the GameCube controller is often viewed as one of the greatest controllers ever made. I actually agree with that. And even Nintendo has already re-released the GameCube controller once to pair it with Smash Brothers. That controller is always on high demand, and that's also why we see so many third-party clones out there. But for whatever reason, these third parties just fell every single time. So with that, there is a chance that Nintendo will bring back the GameCube controller and maybe without the need for an extra adapter to make it work. You know, the current adapter might not even work out of the box for the Switch successor because Nintendo will likely move over to USB-C ports for their next console. So honestly, I mean, a re-release for the GameCube controller makes a lot of sense as we head into that successor. They might want to build that out. So I don't know. I would love for the GameCube to come to Switch Online. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. But realistically, I do think that there are other possible outcomes as well. Let me know what you all think about this, though. Do you think this is an indication that GameCube is heading over to Switch Online? Are you optimistic about that? Or are you a little bit skeptical? Okay, now, unfortunately, we do have a game delay to talk about. This is for Cities Skylines 2, which released on PC and PC Game Pass last year. This is an extremely popular PC series, and it was supposed to release on consoles and, I believe, Xbox Game Pass earlier this spring. It, however, got moved over to October of 2024, so it's already once been delayed, and now it's been delayed a second time. Unfortunately, though, they gave us no update as to when its new release date is expected. You can see their full explanation here, which reads, Dear console players, we wanted to update you on the console release schedule. Unfortunately, we have not yet met the stability and performance targets we set for the console release. Without a release candidate, we are now unable to meet an October release window. While we are making slow but steady progress, there are still unresolved issues impacting the game in ways that harm the player experience we want to deliver. We expect to receive a new RC, which will undergo a thorough review in August. This evaluation will determine whether we can begin the submission process and provide a solid release date, or if further issues need to be addressed. So, yeah, they still have stability issues, which is something the PC community reported a lot early on as well. And that is something about this specific game. If you look at the Steam reviews, it's infested by negative feedback, especially compared to the first game. So, it's not exactly a great look that they're also having issues with the console ports as well. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's the right call to delay. I mean, you know, this gives them the best opportunity to make sure they don't have the same problems. But just knowing all the issues with the first game, I, I can't sit here and say that this is necessarily a good sign either. One way or the other, cross my fingers. Now, one last thing before we go, we might actually get another surprise mobile release, but I think this one here makes a lot of sense and could be massively successful if done right. And that's for 
Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, this is coming from Xputer, who said that they've learned that Final Fantasy XIV Mobile is currently in development. As per the site's sources, bringing the popular MMORPG to mobile devices is a joint project of Square Enix and Tencent. Of course, Tencent is one of the biggest and most successful mobile publishers out there, so this pairing fits nicely. Obviously, this would be a huge task to bring Final Fantasy XIV to mobile devices being one of the most expansive games of all time. I mean, there's a lot of content here, and there's a lot of UI elements to put on, you know, such a small screen, and I'm not exactly sure how comfortable that would be, but I think there's a lot of potential here if they can get it working properly, especially over in places like Japan. The Japanese audience does prefer mobile devices. So if it proves to be a high quality port, which hopefully it will be, a lot of people might then buy in. I will say this much though, don't stop there. While mobile could really expand its reach, if I were Square Enix, I would actually look into the Nintendo Switch successor as a possible destination. I mean, this game already runs on the PlayStation 4 as is, so I mean, I'm just saying, the Switch successor might actually make a lot of sense for Final Fantasy XIV. Either way, definitely a lot of potential if this moves over. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. But as always, do hit that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss one of these updates. But until next time, peace out.